Hello everybody, my name is Leanne Armitage and I'm the co-founder of the Armitage Foundation. Firstly, I just want to say a massive welcome to Armitage Juniors. We are absolutely delighted to have you taking part in this program. I know that you will enjoy this program. I know that you'll learn a lot from it and that you'll develop as an individual. So welcome, we're really pleased to have you. And I really want to encourage you to take full advantage of this opportunity, ask questions, get involved and just really use this as an opportunity to learn and to grow as a person so welcome now as part of this program i'd like to share my story with you in the hope of inspiring you and empowering you that you can achieve your dreams irrespective of the background that you come from so i'll get straight into it i decided that i wanted to become a doctor when i was 15 years old and there is a backstory behind this i was coming home one day with my sister and i remember hearing the propellers of a helicopter from above and anybody who knows me well knows i absolutely love helicopters so I got really excited and I remember asking my sister if we could go over to the scene where the helicopter was landing and she agreed and it was landing on a grass field in the middle of a big estate close to where I live. So when I got there I remember seeing a crowd of people gathered around and everybody's face just looked very stern, there wasn't much emotion to them. And so I remember feeling a little bit weird inside because I was thinking this scene doesn't quite match the excitement I'm feeling inside. So I turned to one of the ladies in the crowd and I asked her, you know, why is everybody gathered here? What's happened? And in that moment, all excitement drained from me as she told me that a young man had been stabbed. And here, you know, here was a moment when I realised that, wow, this helicopter hasn't landed for any good reason at all. So I remember going home that evening with a very heavy heart and I remember meditating and reflecting and praying and thinking, what can I do to make a difference? And then the idea came to me that if I aspired to become a trauma surgeon, which is a type of surgeon who deals with traumatic wound, wound injuries, such as stabbings or if somebody's involved in a car accident, I decided that if I aspire to become this type of surgeon, this would give me a platform to go into environments where young men are victims of knife and gun crime in the hope of inspiring them to be and to do better. So that is essentially how my vision for life was born. But in order for me to make strides towards achieving this, there were many obstacles and challenges I would need to overcome. I grew up in a single parent home on a council estate in Peckham. There were no medics in my family. Out of my mother's five children, only one other went to university. So it wasn't really the culture in my family to go to university. And my mother didn't really understand how to navigate the higher education system, so the university system. So I literally decided that I'm just gonna Google what I need to do. And I googled and I realised the first thing I needed to do was get really good grades at GCSE. So I set myself the goal of achieving 10 A stars, which with your grading system I believe is 10 grade nines. And I like to make this point because it's very important in life that you set yourself goals. Now to my surprise I managed to achieve those 10 A stars, but if I hadn't set that goal I really don't think I would have. And when I set that goal, I didn't think I'd be able to do it, but nonetheless, I wanted to challenge myself and push myself because my mindset was that even if I don't achieve the 10A stars, I'm still going to achieve something pretty good because I'm gonna be working towards the goal of 10A stars, you know? So in the same manner, if you set yourself high goals and work towards those goals, even if you don't achieve that exact goal, you'll still do pretty well, so set yourself goals. So as I said, I set myself this goal, I managed to achieve it to my surprise. And then for my sixth form education, my sister said, suggested that I apply for a bursary which is kind of like a scholarship and I did and to my surprise I was awarded the A Better Chance bursary and I studied at Mill Hill School and there's a picture on the screen of, of me and my brother outside my boarding house on the first day. Now while I was at boarding school I got very involved, I was part of the school swim team, part of cadets, I got involved in running, I of course worked very hard academically, I did the necessary work experience that I needed to do for medicine, I did everything I thought I needed to do to make myself a strong applicant for medical school. And the reason I'm sharing these things with you is because oftentimes medical schools are interested in hearing about your extracurricular activities, so the sports you're involved in, the after school clubs you're involved in. And the reason for this is that they allow you to develop transferable skills, they allow you to work on your communication skills, on your team working skills, they demonstrate that you can work under pressure. And these are all very important skills because as a doctor, you'll also need to be able to use Use these skills okay so that is the reason I've shared um, all of this with you now when I applied to medical school 
I got rejected from every single medical school that I applied to and I felt absolutely heartbroken. I really, really, really felt crushed by that experience because I was thinking I've done everything possible. I've done everything and I'm still rejected, you know? But nonetheless, this was my dream. So I decided that I'm just going to take a gap year and reapply. And I did take a gap year and I had a great time in my gap year. I worked as a lifeguard. I volunteered as a speaker for Asthma UK. I volunteered for a clinic in the east of London to help vulnerable people get registered with GPs. And that really helped to develop me um, for my future medical school when I would eventually get in. I um, travelled, I had a really good time and I reapplied to medical school and this time I got three medical offers and I decided to study at St George's University of London. Now after my second year of medical school I decided to take a year out to study a Bachelor of Science degree in Global Health and whilst you're at medical school you often have the option to do this. And I had a great time during that year. And that was the year that I also co-founded the Armitage Foundation, and which is why you're able to do this program now, okay? Now I've finished medical school. I'm now actually a junior doctor working for the NHS and I'm really enjoying it. And I just really hope that by sharing my story with you, you have seen the importance of persevering. Because as I said, I got rejected at one point. I needed to keep working hard. I hope that you've seen the importance of not having to be restricted or limited by your background, because I came from a very non-traditional background. I came from a background of zero medics, but I still was able to achieve my dream. And I want every single young person watching this video right now to know that you can achieve your dream irrespective of the background that you come from. So thank you for listening. It's been an absolute delight. And I know you'll have an awesome time on this program. Please get involved, ask questions, don't be shy. And I look forward to your progression and development. Thank you. Bye for now.